What's the right amount of protein to eat for optimal health? Seems like maybe that's a simple question, but really it's not. It's a pretty complex question with a hot debate about what the right answer is. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com, and I want to address this in a little more detail. I recently wrote an article that we posted on Diet Doctor about an article, um, about a study that looked at protein intake. But before I get into that, I want to talk a little bit about the concept of protein intake. For starters, there's the RDA of what is sort of the, the minimum uh, goal for protein intake that's generally set at 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of reference body weight, and I'll explain that in a second, per day. Okay, so 0.8 grams per kilogram per day. So when we talk about grams per kilogram, we're not talking about your total body weight because that would mean somebody who weighs 300 pounds is going to need twice as much protein as someone who weighs 150 pounds. Instead, we talk about reference body weight, which is a way of trying to get at lean body mass because that's what we want to um, gauge our protein goals off of. And we have a, actually, we have a, a chart um, at dietdoctor.com, which we'll link to down below, um, which is the, shows you exactly how to define your reference body weight, sometimes called ideal body weight, but that seems a little judgmental. So reference body weight, and then what the corresponding protein intake will be. So that's the RDA. But here's the thing. Some people are promoting that as the optimal amount of protein. But remember, the RDA is set for whether it's protein or whether it's for micronutrients, it's to prevent a deficiency. So that's sort of the floor. That's the minimum you want to prevent a deficiency. We have to realize that's much different than saying this is what's optimal for optimal health. But then, of course, we need to define what is optimal health. And there are lots of ways to define it. But when it comes to protein, I think it's important to define it as it contributes to lean body mass and muscle mass, because not only is that important for glucose utilization and insulin sensitivity, it's also important as we age to prevent sarcopenia or muscle wasting and risks of falling or risks of just frailty, uh, because that definitely contributes to uh, morbidity or sort of decreased quality of life, as well as mortality risk of dying. So muscle mass is important for for multiple reasons then. So when we talk about optimal health, of course, we're talking about optimal blood sugar and insulin sensitivity um, and reducing cardiovascular risk and reducing the risk of um, neurodegenerative diseases. And we're also talking about physical strength and physical health. And that's where protein really plays a big role. So with that quick definition, let's talk about the study. So the study enro enrolled 47 women who were normal weight obese, or NWO. So that might be a, a new um, term for a lot of you. And basically what it means is they had normal body weight, according to the guidelines, normal body mass index, but their body fat percentage was above 30%. So these particular women didn't necessarily need to lose weight. They needed to lose fat mass and gain lean body mass. So what this study did was it randomized those 47 women to a what they called a regular protein diet, which was 0.8 to 1 grams per kilogram per day, or what they called a high protein diet, which is 1.2 to 1.4 grams per kilogram per day. Now, I really take objection to them calling that a high protein diet because that equated to about 25% of calories. To me, that's a moderate protein diet. And at Diet Doctor, that's how we define. We define a moderate protein diet between 1.2 and 1.7 grams per kilogram per day, and a high protein diet usually above 2 grams per kilogram per day or above 30%. I think that's a much more useful definition. And the 0 0.8 to 1 would be sort of like a low protein diet because that's basically the RDA. That's as low as you want to go. Okay. So what did they find? Well, also of note, actually, um, the remainder of the diet was 30% fat, 45% carb. So it wasn't a low-carb diet, but that's okay. That's not what they said they were trying to study. They were just trying to study the amount of protein. Um, exercise was the same between the two. And at 12 weeks, um, the overall weight loss wasn't much different. They only lost um, what was about a kilogram each. But on the higher-protein diet, they had a 1.5-kilogram greater gain in lean body, body mass and a 1.1-kilo greater loss in fat mass. So it's clear with no difference in exercise, no difference in what the rest of the diet really looked like, just eating more protein helped with lean body mass. That seems pretty important, especially for this particular group that they uh, investigated, but really for any group. Now, if you add it on top of that, 
a low carb diet, which can help with fat mass loss. If you add it on top of that resistance training, which can help improve lean body mass. If you add it on top of that time restricted eating or intermittent fasting, now you're seeing these likely cumulative effects to really help body composition, to really improve lean body mass, which is going to improve glucose utilization and insulin sensitivity and stave off those diseases of, of aging um, and frailty and sarcopenia. So protein matters. Now, the composition of the rest of the food you eat matters. Maybe the timing of your protein ingestion might matter. The source of your protein ingestion may matter, especially when combined with high carbs or refined carbs, that might make a difference. But the key for this study, obviously it didn't look at all of that, but the key to this study is higher protein makes a difference and the RDA is the minimum, the floor. If you wanna learn more, we have uh, two good evidence-based guides at dietdoctor.com, which we'll link to below. One is how much protein should I eat? And it kind of walks through all this. And the other is the guide for protein intake um, on a low carb diet. And remember, protein intake, you can get your protein if you're a vegetarian, um, you can get your protein if you're a vegan and you can do those low carb. You may need to supplement. You may, it may be a little more challenging, but the highest bioavailability pr proteins is clearly animal protein. So if that's within your, um, your makeup to eat uh, animal products, I certainly recommend it as the most efficient, least caloric and least carbohydrate way to get your protein intake. All right, hopefully that was helpful. Definitely check out the links below because I think those guys will really help you if you want to learn more about this. Um, and also if you're interested in protein, you likely will be interested in the interview I did with Dr. Ted Naiman, um, on the diet doctor podcast. Um, we have this on YouTube as well as any, um, podcast medium. So check that out. He, he's got a very good perspective on protein and its importance in health. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. Take care and have a good day. 